You know, there are very few games that have left me stunned in 2023. Actually, we could even go as far back as the last few years. Um, and I could probably name a few. But there is a game that came out in 2023 that definitely got a good hype around it. Um, but I feel like it was still a little overshadowed by more mainstream AAA titles. <clears throat> and that game is Remnant 2. And today is going to be kind of a, a nod, a nod to Remnant 2. Because this game did so many things right. Actually, I would probably almost go as far as saying it did nothing wrong. Because... Games get scrutinized in a lot of different ways, and I feel like with Remnant 2, they just kind of checked all the boxes. And in, a, in an earlier video that I've done, I talked about like the boxes that AAA games should check when they release. And I can't quite, I haven't really sat down and like marked out what those boxes are. But let's just say we did know what they were. Remnant 2 would probably be the example of a game that checked them all. Baldur's Gate 3 as well. Um, but today is, we're talking about Remnant 2 because this game was so freaking cool, man. I, I mm, it's a game that I haven't put near enough hours in. I've probably put in 14, which is nothing. This game is so wild in so many different ways and I can't wait to like get into it. Get into the meat and potatoes. If you haven't noticed, I reference meat and potatoes a lot because it's just a hearty meal. If you're a work workaholic, if you like hitting the gym a lot, you got to have your meat and potatoes. All right, that's how you get big. Just perpetual meat and potatoes. And then I guess if you're a healthy freak, you can have some greens as well. Don't take this as gospel. I'm, I'm literally joking. Sometimes my sarcasm can come off uh, not sarcastic. So, um, But yeah, today we're hitting chest. Uh, I didn't feel like going hard in the paint today. Uh, I'm going to do a nice solid chest workout. I'm going to give you a couple tips on mind muscle connection. And then I'm going to show you uh, one of my one of my favorite workouts that I like to do for chest. Um, it's all pr pretty much the same motion, but really it's all about kind of having that mind muscle connection. You know, when you're doing the rep, you want to make sure you feel it exactly where you're trying to target and think about that. So that's what we're going to be getting into. Games and gains episode I don't even know because these are kind of out of order at this point. I accidentally edited the wrong video the other day, so that one came in before another one. So, episode whatever. And yeah, man, we're going to we're going to hit some chest and it's going to it's going to be a good day. I already did my warm up. Uh, I'll probably throw those up on the screen somewhere. Um, if you want to warm up, this is what I uh, I did. I did some flies, uh, flat bench, lightweight, just kind of high reps, nice getting good squeezes, getting the blood in there, ready to go. I'm already sweating just a little bit. And then I always uh, preach doing the face pulls because training that posterior delt is super important for posture. So I always like to warm up the shoulders just a little bit as well. And we're gonna start off with one of my favorite workouts, incline dumbbell press. Now, if you're one of the individuals who haven't played Remnant 2, a brief overview of this game is a third person shooter that would probably feel and move a little bit like The Division where you have you know, two sub-weapons, or one primary, one secondary, um, and then a third-person view. That's a generic way to explain uh, what the game would look like. But then you take something like that and you meld it with something like Dark Souls. A lot of people like to call it a Dark Souls shooter. And <laughs> I mean, it, it, that's exactly I mean, what it was like. Um, you, have, you pick from subclasses, so just like a Souls game or an RPG where you pick from a class and that class has certain special abilities, um, attributes, if you will. And I mean, it suits you know, your playstyle. So try to cater to an individual who has you know, a certain playstyle they like and you proceed on through this game that has oh, pretty challenging gameplay, if I will say. Um, you could easily get your butt clapped pretty, pretty quick in a game like this. And you really got to focus on hitting your shots because if you don't, these enemies are very strong. Hence the 
Souls-like comparison that people like to do for a game like this. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is kind of heavy. Whew. I don't know how many reps that was. Oh, I think it was probably seven. But <sighs> this game was really well received because of its unique play style. And this is the second game, right? So the first one already came out a while ago and uh, it was highly praised. People loved it. And hence the hype about this one, you know, elevated because of fans uh, pre-existing and then those people creating new fans. So the game released smoothly. Very little bugs. Some balances were done, patches immediately. Um, I can't remember which ones off the top of my head, but they did some pretty big patches, um, one, two, and three, just to help the gameplay smooth out a little bit. But nothing was game breaking. That was the impressive part about it. Now, this game had a unique feature that I think, in my opinion, set it apart from a lot of games of its genre. The campaigns were randomized, so, I guess campaigns, it's a campaign, but there are levels. And I think there was seven total, maybe, maybe more. And I know there's been DLC since then, so. But let's say you start the game and a friend starts the game at the same time. You guys are gonna have wildly different experiences because where your friend starts and where you start are not the same. And that is so cool. I had a, one of my buddies tell me that he booted up the game Beat it, played it all the way through, I think twice. And a friend had invited him into his campaign and he was like, oh, you know, I'll play with my friend. I'll help him out, you know. Probably, you know, nothing, I'm not gonna see anything new, you know, I've already beaten the game twice. And he, he said he jumped in, fought creatures he's never seen before. The layout was different because things are randomized, enemy placements are randomized. And he had a brand new experience. Um, replayability, off the charts. That is amazing that you could still you know, play this game to fruition two times, jump in randomly somewhere in a third playthrough with a friend and still experience something new. So as far as delivering, I mean, I haven't even scratched the surface with this game. I mean, I could talk forever right now, but I mean, the game's depth with, you know, weapons, armor, um, classes, you can unlock more classes as you play through this game. And so you can, Another, it's another step, or I guess another tier of um, something new to do in the game. So you've played it as one class, you've played it as another, and now you can play as a third class and have a different combat experience. Um, and then there was also, I mean, gosh, this just keeps going, multi-classing. So not only did you have the one class, you can mix it with one of the other billion. I think there was like seven or eight. Um, so... I mean, if you like a game that keeps you busy and has stuff for you to do, Remnant 2 had your back and it was, and still is, just a game that I can't recommend enough for people, especially if you like RPGs. Now I'm actually starting with one of my favorite workouts actually. And the reason I like dumbbell uh, incline presses so much is because these give like one of the greatest stretches to the muscle which is kind of the most important one with you know training flexibility but then also getting those little micro tears into the muscle you want to grow right so the re how i set these up i never do such a dramatic incline the more upright you are the more you're going to be training your uh your anterior yeah anterior deltoid which is the front portion of the sh shoulder so the, the more steep that incline, uh, the more you train that and your upper pectoral area. So I like to do like a, a very slight, so that way I'm hitting the top of my chest a whole lot more and not putting so much strength on the delts or strength, so much weight on the delts. And then I try to keep my arm at about a 45 degree angle from my body. So not flared out like you would with almost a bench press. You know, the more like, you don't wanna be like this. You wanna be more 45 degrees. And then I'll bring that all the way and get that deep stretch. So I'll bring my elbow all the way down and then press through. So let me demonstrate here. Whew. Oh yeah. All right. So got the weight above the head, deep breath and brace and down and up. That was pretty deep. So a little bit of a struggle, but we're all right. Ooh. 
Now I try to get six with the heavy weight. <sighs> oh. oh. Oh yeah, we're getting sloppy now. Whew. Oh yeah, that was good. Oh. And you know, the more fatigued you you get, sloppier you're gonna get with your reps. So if that happens, you know, take the responsibility to go down in weight. Unless you have a spotter. If you have a spotter that can kind of stabilize you out, and help you through those reps, and keep them quality, then you could stay at the weight. But if you're working out by yourself, like what I'm doing, it'd be better for me to go down five to 10 pounds and have that quality rep over a sloppy struggling rep. And that could be because I'm yapping so much. So <laughs> now here's the part that a lot of people should probably take into account when it comes to this game, because a lot of people have a certain comment they'll drop about a game when it doesn't deliver or if it delivers poorly. And that is the price of a game, right? So Remnant 2, oh, no, no, let, me, let, me, let me start with this. Most games for the longest time have been $60 with a lot of games being $70 nowadays. And then you have deluxe editions, special editions, pushing 80, 90, 150, sometimes up to $200, right? And there's a few outliers out there as well because you know there's always like a super mega edition or something that comes with like night vision goggles, right? So you have all these games that are pushing this dollar amount and when a game doesn't deliver, the first comment that most people want to say is, I can't believe I spent $60 on this. Or imagine paying full price, you know? Or a lot of people want games to just be on Game Pass, right? Well, Remnant 2, <laughs> $50. They charged $10 less for this game. And one of the articles that came out this year was from the CEO of, I believe, Capcom. And there was Capcom and then I feel like there was somebody else. Maybe I'm mixing it up a little bit. Oh God, this feels good. But they, they said that, you know, games should cost more these days because of, you know, labor, uh, the amount of development time, assets, yada, 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 whatever. And they say, hey, games should cost more. Everything else costs more. Games should cost more too. It's been like 10 years since the game price has been increased. And to a point, I agree. But at the same time, certain games aren't giving the same amount of enjoyment, okay? So let's use a really bad example of a game. Um, I don't know. Well, we use Redfall, okay? Redfall came out, $60 game, or maybe it was a $70 game. I can't remember, I think it was 60 though. And AI wasn't working well, game was buggy, things weren't working, things weren't loading, lots of problems. And that was a full price game. Remnant 2 comes out, has everything working flawlessly, super enjoyable, no major game breaking bugs, and unlimited amount of hours of enjoyment to be had. So here are two games, one's $10 less, one's $10 more, but they're giving vastly different experiences in quality and quantity of time available for fun. So to my point, um, for bang for your buck, if you're looking for a game that's gonna one, be enjoyable, depending if you like the genre, and you wanna be able to play it a bajillion D hours, it's crazy that Remnant 2 comes out at a lower price and has so much to offer for a gamer. And I feel like a lot of people, I mean, if you're asking for something, if you want a game to deliver, we need to start setting the bar and letting studios know like, this is what we should be delivering for a full price premium title. And here's the crazy part, Remnant 2 is on Game Pass. So <laughs> if you want to buy it outright, it's 50 bucks, so it's $10 less than most games. And if you just have Game Pass, then you can just play it. That's kind of wild. I, I rest my case. I don't know how much more I need to actually say about this game. I have so much more to say, but I want to talk about... <laughs> we're going to talk about bosses next. Also, um, 
hammer strength machines are so nice for the squeeze, man. Like I'm, this is one of my favorite, actually hammer strength in general is one of my favorites because it's just one plane and you just get to focus on raw strength. You don't have to worry about stabilizer muscles and going up, up, down, left, right. Forward. The weight went forward. Really awesome. Now, if you really are uh, a fan of the Souls-like games, you know that bosses are kind of their forte. They have unique mechanics. They all have something going on where, you know, maybe it has a second stage or some kind of poisoning effect or status ailment that you got to avoid or plan for. And I will say that of the boss fights I can remember, they delivered on that Hoo really well. I mean, the first boss that I encountered, I call him the dinner plate. Oh God, this burns. Oh God, oh, that was great. But uh, I call him the dinner plate boss because, well, one, you walk in and it's like this giant wall and there's like a thing sitting on a throne and you're like, oh my God, this is a giant boss I'm gonna fight. It's gonna be awesome. And then his face detaches and starts floating around and he has this death beam that literally builds death and kills you if it exposes too long to you, it's an instant kill. So you have this dinner plate that you can't, you can't stare at it for too long because that's how it builds this. You gotta hide behind a pillar, which is where I spent most of my time. And then he sends ads at you. And it's funny, I actually don't know what ads stand for. I learned it back when I played Destiny. Someone's like, who's got ad control? Enemies, okay. I think it stands for adversaries. No, don't quote me though, because I'm wrong about a lot of things most of the time. But, so anyways, they send, send these enemies at you, wave after wave, ads. And so you have to kind of like maneuver around and kill these while also not getting hit by a death beam. But then also you need to shoot him when the death beam is happening because that's the only time he takes damage. There's so many working parts to this thing that I was like, this is amazing. Like I'm having the most fun. I died like, I don't know, four or five times. <laughs> not too many. But uh, I also picked the class. Um, I can't remember which one it was. It's the one with the dog. And uh, so I had my dog running D for me <laughs> and he took the hits for me while I took care of the boss. And uh, one thing that I noticed also is that each boss drops a unique weapon for you to use. Um, apparently the one that dropped for me uh, was not very good. Um, I used it for a little while, but there's just some enemies it just didn't work really well on. And those weapons have like special abilities too, which is super cool. So, and then the other boss that was just I don't know, man. It was just so unique. I think unique is the word that I would use the most often going through this game because oh, I'm just doing it until the blood fills in. It feels really good. It's really nice to finish on triceps on a chest day. But uh, yeah, unique is the word because the other boss that is just melded into my head, I think I've used the word melded twice now and I don't think I've used it correctly. Anyways. Um, this this puzzle boss like a like a cube in a maze and you had to shoot little weak points on the cubes and then and then after you shot enough of them it died but you had to like maneuver this giant labyrinth this this maze and like there would be like cutouts of the cubes so like if it was gonna smash you you could hide in it and then figure out where you're gonna go from there and then also it would shoot at you so it was shooting at you, trying to crush you, and you're in a maze. So like, once again, and it, and it gave you another weapon after you beat it, if you want to use it. So, I mean, that's the, those are the bosses I can remember that I've gotten to. But like I said, I didn't have a lot of time into this game yet, but it's one of these games where I'm just like, it's a, it's a must play. Like it is a, if you like RPGs and you like Souls games, this, this is Soul Shooter right here, man. Like, <laughs> that'd be a cool name, actually. Soul Shooter. Dang. That'd be a great name for a game. Anyways, um, yeah, man. Boss fights are just awesome. And the enemies are cool, too, dude. Like, you're just constantly under fire by something weird going on. And, man, I've created some clips while playing that game, too. <laughs> I'm dumb when I play games, and every once in a while I, I stream. I used to stream quite a bit often, but now that I'm doing this content thing, it's like I'm so busy, but... I'm dumb and I, <laughs> I've created a lot of funny moments with this game as well. So, but yeah, I think out of 2023, 
It's one of the top games. I'm surprised that it did not get more out of the Game Awards because it deserved so much. I actually met the devs, a couple of them, not all of them, but they were all wearing t-shirts. I was at the, uh, like a little after party for the Game Awards and uh, they always do it in this hotel lobby. And uh, I saw a couple, like few people wearing Remnant 2 shirts and I was like, I think that's the devs, I gotta go say hi. So I ran over and I was like, excuse me, like, are you the Remnant 2 devs? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, I just wanna come over and say thank you for that game. It's so amazing, it was so cool to like, thank the creators, right? You know, a couple of them, who knows what they worked on. I didn't really talk their ears off and it's hard not to fanboy, you know, but it was really cool going up to them and thanking them for their work. You know, it feels, felt cool, I guess. <laughs> Uh, lack of a better words, it was just nice because I, a game that, like I said, didn't win enough awards. It won one award, it escapes me, I'll put it on screen and post, but yeah, Remnant 2 is a top tier, top tier game and it, it sets the bar for games moving forward. I, I feel like, I feel like every game meeting, meeting that expectation would be hard, but if I was a game dev, I don't care where it was and I don't care if it's a pride thing, like swallow your fucking pride, man. Put out a game that's fucking finished, checks all the boxes, and makes your player base happy. Like, how fucking hard is it to do that? Pardon my language, but I'm kind of getting a little passionate about this because I don't understand how a game like, first of all, I, I can't even say it like the day before, like, that was just straight up a scam. Like, that game was a scam. So, fine, sure. But Kong Skull Island, are we making games to look super bad to make us thankful for games that are not quite checking the boxes? Is that what we're doing now? Because if so, F that, man. Sorry for dropping the F-bomb earlier, but yeah. I don't know, it just feels, it feels like, what was the other one, uh, Walking Dead? Bro, are you kidding me? How do these games get released? Like, how is it? I don't understand. Like, you had a team working on these games and they're terrible, so yeah. Make your player base happy. That's how you sell games. It's really that easy. Now, I did have someone from the YouTube comment section ask me if I could do a one-arm push-up. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna answer it right away. I'd actually rather put it in a video. So I decided that I would reply to you in this video with our chest day. And the funny part is, is I'm kind of spent right now, but I think I can still pull this off. So I've always done them the same way. Um, I do a wide stance and then I angle my body so that I, as far as balance goes, I'm pressing most of this uh, perp my chest is perpendicular to the ground, at least quite a bit. So, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do these. I just burnt my triceps out really bad. This is gonna be rough, <clears throat> but here we go. Oh man, okay, here we go. I just finished a tricep set too. Oh no. Okay, here we go. <sighs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> I'm about to embarrass myself. I should have done these at the beginning of the workout. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Oh God, here we go. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> you guys get to vote whether or not those count. I'm surprised I got that. What did I get, four? I think I was going for five. <laughs> Man, there's, there's a lot of blood on my tricep right now. But that's how I've always done my one-on push-ups. So use your definition. You tell me if it counts or not. But uh, yeah, guys, I mean, that's gonna be the video for today. I'm gonna finish up my workout here. Um, you have any questions about any of those workouts I do? For me, it's like, for me, they're basic. I've done them my whole life, but maybe some of you guys are beginner, beginners at working out and you have questions. So if you do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna claim to be a fitness guru at all, but I have been doing this long enough to where if someone is a beginner, I can give you some pointers. Maybe sometimes those at super advanced channels are just a lot for you to take in. So if you guys have questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. And if you guys have a lot of questions, I'll try to put them in videos in the future. So, um, but yeah, guys, uh, to wrap this up, Remnant 2, I've said it before already, I'll say it again. Easily one of my favorite games of the year. <clears throat> um, if you haven't given it a bite, I would absolutely try, especially since it's on Game Pass. So if you have an Xbox, you have really nothing to use, lose. You get a PC Pass as well, so you can play it on there. Um, it's definitely a really good mouse and key game. I will also say that. I play that game mouse and key and I love it. It's so fun. So I would recommend it on play, uh, PC, 
um, if you can. But uh, definitely a good game regardless. So, um, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the workout. Hope you enjoyed the chat about the game. Uh, very passionate about it. So, And uh, this is after the holiday, so I hope you guys had a good holiday. Hope you guys have a good new year. And we will do this again very soon.